and welcome to Impact the Programme where we take a look at topics and issues that are impacting our lives and looking at how we can impact others with the gospel. And tonight's programme is entitled Pain into Purpose because our guest this evening is Gabriella Payne and she's going to be talking to us about her testimony and how everything she has been through, God was there with her and how she now has purpose in her life. So as a little bit of an introduction to Gabriella, from a young age, she has always been passionate about sharing the love of Jesus. In her life, she has overcome many storms and situations, including insecurities, pain, depression and hopelessness. But these storms were an invitation for Gabriella to go deeper with God. She used her pain as purpose and in the moments when she felt like giving up, God held her hand, picked her back up and now she's using her testimony with her online ministry and social media to help others get up after life tries to knock them down. So Gabriella, welcome to Impact. Hello, thank you. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you for being part of Impact. And I think many people watching today are going to be really inspired and relate to your testimony in many different areas of your testimony. And I really pray today that it's just a, a way of blessing those that are watching and giving them some hope and encouragement and advice through life as well. Yeah, I love that. Amen. Amazing. So do you just want to start off telling us a little bit about yourself? Where were you born? Where did you grow up? And what was family life like? Yeah. So I've moved around many, many times in my life. I was actually born in Holland because my dad played football there. After Holland, I moved to England and I lived in England for around three years. After that, I moved to Spain. and I lived in Spain for five years. I learned to speak Spanish because I went to a Spanish school. After that, I moved to Brazil, which is actually, I'm half Brazilian. So my mom's Brazilian, my dad's English. So I went to my hometown um, back in Brazil, lived there for three years. And that is the place where I actually met Jesus for the first time. And then after that, I came back to England um, back in around 2011 and when I came back to England that's when my life started to go downhill because so many storms came along um, but it's obviously through the storms that I went through is that is who I became today because of those things that happened to me so I'm very excited to share with you guys today. Incredible yeah we're looking forward to hearing you to share and to really as I say relate to others and you mentioned there how you met Jesus for the first time had you always mm -hmm. believed in Jesus had you always had a faith in God from a young age or did it come later in life? Uh, well since literally from the minute I can remember, I've always known God. Like even though no one's ever explained like God to me or Jesus to me, I just always had that connection with him, always had that friendship with him. I remember like having been six years old and just praying to God. No one ever told me how to pray, but I'd be there in my bed just thanking God for my life, thanking God for my family, for what I had. So I just always had that connection. But when I moved to um, Brazil, that's when I finally got to know him as you know my savior and I gave my life to Jesus. Incredible. It's so nice to hear that at such a young age you had such a thankful heart and you had such gratitude in your life and thankful for the mm. things you had around you. And I think that's really incredible that from a young age, and I'm sure you've carried that on into your, your present day as well. And yeah. you mentioned there you met Jesus in Brazil and it's quite an amazing testimony of what was happening at the yeah. same time. Do tell us what happened. Yeah, so it's, it's a crazy story. So a lot was going on at that time. Uh, my dad would actually travel back to England all the time. So we live in Brazil, but because of his job, he'd travel to England literally nearly every three months, all the time just traveling. Um, and there was one time when I was going through a really, really dark place, going through depression. He was in a, just a low, really low stage in his life. So he went to England and over there, he, he hit rock bottom. He was like, God, I can't do this anymore. And I need to come back to you. So at that moment in England, he was actually giving his life to God. Whilst me, my mum and my sister were over in Brazil and that same night, that same exact day that he gave his life, me and my mum and sister were in Brazil watching TV, we was watching like novellas, watching, you know, Brazilian TV, just rubbish TV basically. And as I was watching it, the, the channel actually changed to a, a gospel channel um, of this pastor that was preaching and was like, oh, what's this channel? Like we, even though we didn't mind it, we were just like, no, let's go back to our novellas. So we went back to the old channel and the channel just switched over again. We was like a bit freaked out because like, what's going on here? So we actually ended up just staying to watch the, the show, the preach. And as I was watching this preach, we're literally 10 minutes into it, we're all crying our eyes out. It, the Holy Spirit just came and visited us and we just were so touched by the, the sermon. And in that exact moment, we, we all gave our life to Christ. So we had no idea that my dad on the other side of the world was giving his life to Christ that same night. So a week goes by, my dad comes back to Brazil to obviously reunite with us. And he goes, guys, I've got amazing news to tell you. I gave my life to Christ. And me, mom, and my sister were there like, no way. We've got amazing news to tell you. We've actually given our lives to Christ. And it was just like a supernatural moment in that. I just, yeah, it was just an amazing testimony. That, that 
two different sides of the world. God was literally ministering to us as a family. So it's such a beautiful family moment. And from that moment forward, we've just been on fire for God. And we got baptized literally the week after. It was a beautiful day. We got baptized and we just got plugged into the church. And from that moment, actually, my pastor was like, you're going to be a pastor one day. Because I was so on fire for God. Like, even, I think I was 11 years old. I gave my life to Christ. And I would literally... Um, gather everyone from my street so I'd knock on everyone's door on my, in my neighborhood and say come to my house tonight at 5 p.m I'm going to preach to you all I want to share about the love of Jesus to you all and I literally just preached to so many people at 11 years old so I just love that I had that childlike faith and yeah something that which is so special and amazing to look back at. Amazing. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it, to see how God works. And I think testimonies are so powerful and so important because no one can argue your testimony. No one can say, well, that didn't happen in your life. You experienced that and you know what you felt. You felt the Holy Spirit. And on the other side of the world, your dad was feeling exactly the same. And God just brought you together as a family and united you in that. So I think that's beautiful. And how you've been prophesied over that you're going to be a pastor and you're doing that in, in kind of a modern kind of way with the videos that you do. And we'll come to that a little bit later but I mentioned how you you were kind of united as a family in that moment in time but there did come a point in your life and maybe it was the first storm that you had to fight against and battle with that your parents did break up can you explain to us what happened yeah so that was probably one of the biggest storms in my life I never saw that coming ever um if you've ever been through your parents divorce you know how heartbreaking it is just as a family we were so united like we all came together you know as a family and we all gave our lives at the same time and all of a sudden our family just separates and it was just it was attack for the enemy so when we um decided to move back to england we lived in brazil i had to move back because of his job so the minute we came back the devil's already planning his tactics to separate my family because he knew that we was coming to england on fire for god you know ready to build the church my dad was ready to become a pastor like we just had big plans as a family so obviously the devil was scared so he sent every single demon he could to come and destroy the plans that god had for us so my parents would start to, you know, argue a lot. A lot of division would start to happen. A lot, just so many little things start to happen. But then it just eventually blew up. My parents eventually got a divorce, which was super heartbreaking. I think I was around 12 to 13 at the time. And that really, really destroyed me because I had to go through high school. At that time, I was doing my GCSEs. So I, I nearly failed all of my, you know, my exams because it just weighed me down so much. And it was just really heartbreaking to see, you know, my, that's that un that un unity that we had in the family just be you know just to die basically and yeah it was, it was a really tough time for Paul um I had to you know get used to new schools I had to get used to new, new routines I had to live in new separate homes now because obviously we had to move to different places so it was a lot of changes a lot of difficulties but we got through it so yeah incredible I can't that's imagine cool. how tough that must have been to have to go through all them different changes and having that um stable foundation that you have and now it's been a bit rocky and a bit separated and I just want to um, hone in on the point that you made that you guys were on so fire for God and that's when the devil comes in that's when we're so confident in our faith in God and when God wants to use us the devil is scared because the devil knows that we are more powerful than him he knows that we have authority in the name of Jesus to cast the devil away and to do things in Jesus's name and the devil don't want us to do that he wants to take us away from God and take away our faith and our confidence so I just want to encourage anybody that's watching that if at the moment in time you feel like you might be having a spiritual attack, maybe there's some mm -hmm. division in your family or doubts coming into your mind, whatever it is, just keep honing in on God. Just keep standing on your faith and just keep praying in the name of Jesus. And I just pray right now that God strengthens you in the situation that you're in. And I pray that as we hear the rest of Gabriella's testimony today, that you'll really be able to relate to what she's saying and really be able to know that how God worked in her life will be able to work in your life as well. So. Gabriele, I think it's again, I'm just so excited that you're here to be able to share this with us. And the next question I want to ask is, of course, there was a lot of changes going on, as we mentioned, and there's a lot of new people that you were having to meet. But in what ways did the divorce of your parents affect you as a person and your mindset mm -hmm. of how you saw the world? Yeah, so I think it completely destroyed my views on relationships because seeing my family go from such a loving family to then, you know, divorce coming out of it, it really destroyed that that view on like love and relationships. So it distorted my view. So because of that, it actually led me to go to the wrong relationships and seeking the wrong type of love to be able to, to heal those parts in my heart. And as um, it, during my parents' divorce, my dad had to move away to a different country. So me and my dad have always been best friends. We're, we're best friends till this day. We're super, super close. But during that time, he did have to move away. And by him moving away, it 
his presence being gone as a father in my life, it left that gap in my heart. Mm. So I go to men to try and fill that void in my heart. I go to, you know, boys. So even though I was so, so young at the time, I was like, okay, I need a boyfriend. So if I have a boyfriend, that's a man in my life that can fill that gap that my dad isn't fit, that can't fill right now. And that's when it all went downhill. So I met my first boyfriend at, at the age of 15. And that little did I know that that relationship would literally ruin my life. By God's grace, it didn't. he didn't succeed. But um, it really, really traumatized me in that relationship because I didn't know what I was getting myself into. It became very abusive, very toxic, emotionally abusive, um, sexually abusive, unfortunately, as well. And I just went through a lot of, um, just a lot of trauma in that relationship that took me years and years to heal from. Um, but by God's grace, he's been able to heal me. So yeah, like I said, it just really distorted my views. So after that relationship obviously finally ended, it, it took me three years to be able to escape it because when you're dating a narcissist, they'll do everything for you to not let you escape that relationship. So when I finally did, I moved city, changed my number, I got away. Um, I still had that, you know, that negative view on relationships. And especially after the trauma I've just been through, it affected me even more. So I got into a second relationship with the wrong, with the wrong person which ended up cheating on me, which created more pain in my heart and even distort, and distorted my view even more on relationships. So I was completely lost. I lost my my worth. I didn't have any confidence anymore. I thought it was all because of me. I thought it was because, I don't know, I put a lot of blame on myself. So yeah, it took me a lot of years to heal from, but by the grace of God, <laughs> you know, I'm now engaged. I'm a fiance to my amazing fiance. And I'd love to go obviously deeper into that around in the show. So yeah. Yeah, amazing. We can see him there. That's Ricardo. That's your now fiance, which is amazing how, again, we see that God has brought you out of that pain of them relationships, not understanding what a relationship is. Now he's brought you yeah. into one where you can have laughter, you can have joy. And we see this is just some of the clips of your videos that you post on your YouTube page that you just look so happy. And it's good to hear that and good to see that after the things that you've been through in relationships. So if there might be someone who's watching today who who you've mentioned the sexual abuse, you've mentioned the narcissistic boyfriend, you've mentioned the controlling boyfriend if someone maybe is watching and thinking that kind of resonates with me a little bit the, the mm -hmm. guy that I'm kind of with or the girl whatever what kind of relationship yeah. you're in and they remember like this this doesn't feel quite right and you said it took you three years to get out of that relationship mm -hmm. what advice yeah. and confidence can you give that person that if they feel like they shouldn't be in this mm -hmm. situation what can they do well yeah well that's a big question because I've been through it so many times now I think my biggest my best advice my biggest tip would be well, I'm going to let you know first that it will get better. Um, it's all in your hands, really, because if you just put in, if you ask God to help you to get out of it, he will He will make an escape. I think there's an actual Bible verse where God, it says he will make an escape for you to get out of that temptation. So pray, ask God to help you to find a way out of the, of the situation, because it's really hard, especially when you're being threatened, especially when you're being, you know, um, held captive by that person. It's really hard to escape it, but by God's grace, you will definitely be able to. Um, I'd say you need to get a, you need to get away. I know it's really hard to block the person because you know they might come and stalk you, they might come after you, especially if they know where you live. But do take every single step necessary in order to take, to block that person out of your life. Like I said, I had to move city, I had to change my number, I had to make new social media accounts. Do whatever necessary to be able to escape from that person 100%. Don't allow even like a tiny little gap to creep back in. Even if you have to like. Um, separate from certain friendships, se separate from certain people, from even your church, because I, I was actually at the church where he attended, so I had to leave the church. You have to do whatever it takes to be able to escape from that person. That's the only way you're going to be able to cut those ties with that person and finally, you know, receive freedom. Yeah, man, I think it sounds quite drastic what you're saying, but I think it's needed. I think if you are in that close proximity with that person, you need to cut that off. And especially if it's bringing so much negativity and pain into your life, you need to turn yeah. to God. And in these moments of time, when you was going through all this, did you ever kind of blame God? Did you ever question him or were you ever angry at him or did you turn to him for, for peace? What kind of relationship, how was your relationship with God like when you were having these traumatic relationships on earth? Yeah. Well, I never actually blame God, surprisingly, because I feel like I, I know a lot of people when they go through storms and tests and trials, they, they tend to blame God. Why, God, why am I going through this? But I've always had this mindset of instead of um, why is this happening to me, I ask, I've always told God, thank you that you're allowing me to go through this because actually, it's actually going to teach me something uh, later on in life. So I've always seen like the value in my struggles, like I always said. 
my my pain produces purpose and that's something I've always lived by so when I was going through those really dark times I held on to God for dear life because that was my only hope I knew that he was the only one that was going to get me through he was my only route of escape he was going to be my only way of receiving freedom so yeah I, that's one piece of advice for you as well if you're going through something really traumatic at, at um, this moment in time hold on to God for dear life because I promise you he'll get you through it I promise just like you've seen all throughout the bible how he's rescued so many people I promise you he'll do the same for you because he definitely did for me that's incredible. And it, it makes me think there's so many times and examples in the Bible where God's trying to lead people. He's trying to guide people or trying to bring certain opportunities or people into their lives. And it happens in our own lives. And we kind of want to go our own way. We sometimes don't want to be a dis. We don't want to be yeah. obedient. We're disobedient. And I guess living in the sinful world that we're in, we are kind of born into this rebellious kind of spirit and this heart. And yeah. sometimes we know that God has the right path for us. Uh, we know that God knows what's best for us. But sometimes we kind of just want to go our own way, don't we? And we, we stray down a different yeah. path and we kind of want to do things in our own strength and then when we do that when we make decisions that we know maybe aren't godly we end up in consequences where we find ourselves having to struggle with all these different emotions and these different things so have you noticed that in in your life that when you're obedient things are more fruitful and then when maybe God's trying to be nudging you in one way you found yourself going in a different direction Definitely, yeah. I've definitely seen that because just like I said, after that first relationship, um, I mentioned how I got into another bad relationship. So after that ended, I felt God say, okay, it's time for you to heal. It's time for you to calm down, stay away from men for as long as you need to and to heal and overcome this pain that you're going through. But because of disobedience to God, I then got into another relationship. So it was my own fault. I put myself in that position to get hurt again because I know that God was saying, okay, it's time for you to heal and just come to me so I can restore you. But because I didn't, I ended up getting myself into more pain um so it's definitely so important that when you come out of a relationship or just when God is nudging you to to follow his path to follow his way to be obedient to his calling make sure you do because if you go to your own um your own path in the moment it might feel good in the moment it might feel like it's satisfying you but it will, it's temporary satisfaction and it will lead you to more harm and pain further down the line Definitely. And I think when you were talking earlier about the fact that when your your father wasn't living with you anymore and you kind of had that separation, you were looking for that fulfillment elsewhere. And I think so many of us do that, even in other areas. We look for fulfillment, whether it's because mm -hmm. of a breakdown in a family or a relationship or we just feel lonely or whatever. We always look for that satisfaction elsewhere. That's and right. like you say, it's temporal a lot of the time. Sometimes people can yeah. turn to drugs, to drink, to, to sex, to, to other things to try and fulfill themselves and make them feel good and give them that confidence confidence but we know as Christians that we really when we have that relationship with God he's the one that can fulfill us and to, and to make us whole so mm -hmm. how did you become whole when you were saying that you've had these two now found relationships that were negative in your life and it took you a while mm -hmm. to heal what was that healing process and, and what, how was God working mm -hmm. in your life then yeah well that healing process was really really tough because I had a lot of trauma to, to deal with I had a lot of you know PTSD from everything I'd been through so it was a lot it was a lot that I had to give to God but obviously God says cast your care onto me for I care I care for you so um I just thought I wanted to mention after I got into that second relationship and I got cheated on I then met my fiance Ricardo um when I met Ricky we had an amazing relationship but we actually had another storm in that relationship so we actually broke up for a whole nine months and in that nine months is when God did the healing work from my first relationship, my second relationship, and for what me and Ricardo just went through as well. So it was only then that I began to fully, you know, hear God's voice, fully, just fully turn my life back to him because I'd, do, I'd been doing things my own way for so long now. You know, I'd been healing the wrong way for so long. I've been going from men, not in like, a, I don't know, it's, it's going to sound so bad, but I, went, I was literally going from men to men to men because I thought that was the only way that I could heal that void in my heart and when my dad left. So um yeah so after me and Ricardo broke up I just spent those nine months trying my best to just cast everything to God just give everything to him I asked him to remove all the spirits the unclean spirits that were in me spirits of you know finding comfort in men um having you know the insecurities in me that were developed by you know finding validation from men finding validation from social media and I just gave all these things to God and just through that process God was able to just purify me cleanse me make me a whole different person transform my whole life so now I can sit here and say, I'm finally whole. I'm finally healing. I'm on a journey of healing. And I feel like healing, is, it's, it's going to be an ongoing journey. Because in life, you know, we could be healed today, but then something can happen tomorrow, completely bring you back down. So you're on a constant journey of healing. We're only going to be perfect and whole when we get to heaven. But on this earth right now, it's a constant journey that we're on. 
Definitely. And I, and I think that's why it's called a journey, isn't it? Because you don't just get to your destination. And I think often in life, we're so wanting, we're so impatient. We want to get to the destination without the journey. And my dad always says to me, just take one step at a time. I think sometimes we can become so overwhelmed by life and overwhelmed by getting to where we need to be or want to be and rushing God. And it's all about God's timing. And I think that's something that we can all learn so much more of is to trust in his timing, not our own. And, and perhaps in your life, you weren't trusting in his timing for when you were ready to be in a relationship. Because I think also a lot of us rush to be in a relationship because we want a relationship but we're not actually ready for one and we don't realize it at the time that God actually wants us to have some space like he kind of took you and, and Ricky apart for a time just yeah. so you can work on yourselves work on your relationship yeah. with God and I think often people say my other half and I always say it shouldn't be your other half you need to be complete in yourself yeah. and with God exactly. and then come mm -hmm. with a be with a complete person because I think that's, that's where true. The, the problems can come in a relationship when you're relying so much on each other or you're expecting to take love from each other, but you don't have enough love to pour out and give to them. So I think it's important to know your self-worth, know your self-value, know who you are in God, and then be able to commit to someone when you're fully whole. And you mentioned there how you, you were losing yourself in a sense and you were going to social media for approval. Yeah. And I think that's a big thing that's happening in today's society, that social media is such a big thing. People are following trends and and it looks like everybody's happy on social media and it's an addiction. We're constantly scrolling and constantly picking up our phone and, and getting that approval. So can you just explain to us emotionally and kind of spiritually maybe in what ways would you go into social media for your fulfillment? Yeah, definitely. So after all those breakups with those men, um, I found myself going to social media for approval and for validation. I only felt beautiful in myself when I got you know, 100 likes on Instagram. I only felt beautiful about myself when people comment on my pictures. Oh my gosh, you're so stunning. You're so gorgeous. That's, that made me feel good about myself. And it's just so sad. But that's unfortunate that the world that we live in right now, people go to social media for that validation. So I definitely found myself going in that cycle for, year, for years and years and years. And it was only until um, last year that God fully set me free from that. And he changed my mindset on that. So yeah, it is really sad that that is literally the reality of social media. And what, what advice could you give to someone maybe today watching, knowing that that's where they get their worth and value from? How can we encourage them that it's not about what the world thinks about them or even what their friends thinks about them, but it's actually what God thinks about them? So there's a Bible verse, which is in um, Psalms 139, verse 13. It says, you formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you love me, Lord. You even formed me every single bone in my body when you created me in a secret place. Carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. That is just such a beautiful verse to look at. But I feel like in moments where we want to compare ourselves to social media, in moments where we want to compare, you know, our lips, our noses, our eyes, our makeup, our, our bodies to different girls on social media, or even for men, like they may look at other men and see, oh, he's got like a bigger body. He, you know, he's got that gym body that I really desire. In those moments, we need to just realize who has God made us to be, not the way, not the person we want to become because she has that clear skin. So I need that clear skin now. You know, when we look at that verse, it just it's just so powerful because God made us so uniquely. He's made us so beautiful and that we shouldn't be chasing validation from the world, but God has already given us validation. He's already told us who we are. He's already told us how, what, how he thinks of us. You know, so going to the world, going to, going to social media for that type of approval, it's never going to last. It's, you're going to be chasing it, chasing it forever, and you're never going to be satisfied. It satisfies you. Those likes satisfy you for a moment. But when you sit in bed at night or, you know, or you're seeing the act, you're seeing, you know, the stretch marks, you're going to feel bad again until you post the next picture and the next picture. It's like an ongoing cycle that never ends. But when you find your identity in Christ, it's like, just like that Bible verse, like it's, um, it's a water that you never, you'll never thirst again. When you drink from Jesus' water, you'll never thirst again. And that's the type of, you know, love and, and, and um, comfort you receive from God's love and his identity. So I would definitely um, recommend that you establish that firm identity in Christ. That's the only place you're going to get full validation. 
Definitely. That's a beautiful scripture that, that you shared with us, um, Gabriella. So thank you for that. And I just want to encourage the viewers that we are all made different. We are all made unique. And God did that intentionally because we call Christians the body of Christ because it's like a physical body. It's like the hand has one job to do. The mouth has something else to do. The eyes have something else to do. And they all each have a purpose and a specific yeah. thing to do. What the eye does, mm -hmm. the hand doesn't do. And the hand doesn't do what the eye does. But And that's yeah. how he's created the body of Christ, that we all have unique skills and gifts and talents that he's given us so that we can work for his kingdom, that we can work together with other Christians to do the good works that God has made for us. So mm -hmm. social media, we can so often compare ourselves and like you say, look at this other person, think, oh, she's got yeah. this skill. Oh, he's always in that country. He must be really rich. And exactly. I think a lot of the time, social media is so superficial. Everyone just posts the best parts of their life. They very rarely right. post anything mm -hmm. negative and, and bad. And what I love about your ministry, Get Up Girl Ministries and your YouTube channel is that you post really raw, authentic videos. You're not trying to be anybody else. You you come on without your makeup on, you're, you're just doing everyday things. So tell us about that journey, how you went from needing that approval and that satisfaction and makeup on social media to now that you're just confident to just be you, no makeup, warts and all on, the, on YouTube. It's been an amazing journey that God has taken me on to finally just actually learn to love myself the way he made me to be because I was actually really addicted to makeup and I found validation in my makeup. I only felt confident in myself and had full eyeshadow, mascara, contour. And there's actually nothing wrong with makeup, but it's why are you wearing it? For what reason are you wearing it? Are you, are you wearing it because it's the only way that you feel good about yourself? Why are you wearing it just to, you know, enhance your features? There's nothing wrong with it. But with my, um, my relationship with makeup was very toxic. Because um, I don't mention it before, but I actually developed really severe acne at the age of 17 to 18. My acne started to get really, really bad and it just flared up and that completely destroyed my confidence. So I would pack on layers and layers of makeup to try and cover that up. And it's the only thing that made me feel beautiful about myself. Um, so to overcome that, it was really tough. This time last year, I actually went to a church event and I forgot my makeup. I was there for three days and I forgot my makeup. And when I tell you that was the most scariest thing I've ever been through because I I relied so much on that makeup to make me feel beautiful. When I forgot it, I literally, I nearly had a panic attack in the bathroom because I was like, how am I going to leave this chalet right now, this hotel? And everyone's going to see me. Like, everyone's going to see my acne scars, going to see the redness. What am I going to do? I was literally having a full-on mental breakdown, um, which was really sad. But I just told myself, okay, Lord, I'm going to need you to really help me to get through because I, I can't even borrow anyone else's makeup because in, in my actual room I was sharing my room with all the girls had darker skin tones I couldn't even share their makeup so I had no other option but to actually just embrace it and just go out and just face everyone with my acne and that's exactly what I did so I left and when I just as I went around the weekend like I realized no one even cared no one even looked at my acne and when I started to realize that I'm actually a daughter like I'm a daughter I'm a fiance I'm an auntie when, and I'm me without the acne or not so when I actually start to realize that, I start to forget about my acne. I start to actually look at me for who I am as a child of God, not for what's on my skin, not for my exterior, but who I am as a person. And when I start to just learn that lesson, it starts to change my mindset so much. So also I went back home and I was like, you know what? I actually managed to do no makeup by that week. Let me just continue to do it. So I'd go to church with no makeup. I started to go to work with no makeup. And as I, as I went on, I saw that people didn't, didn't care at all about my acne. They just accepted it. Um... I just went on that journey of, you know, learning. And there was a few times where I tried to go back to it because I just, I did feel insecure at times when my acne would get even worse or people would like stare at it. It would bring me back down to like square one again. I did, I had that, I had that temptation to want to go back to the makeup, but um, I persevered through it. And I just, I was really surprised. I was like, no, I'm not going to wear makeup anymore. And one thing, my, one piece of advice is if you want to overcome an insecurity, if you want to overcome something, you have to confront it. One thing that my, my fiance always says is that you can't heal what you don't reveal. So because I revealed my acting to the world, I was then able to heal from it. But if you, you know, if you, if you don't reveal what you're insecure about, you're always going to hold it. You're always going to try to hide it. It's like your little baby, but you have to show it to the world in order to be able to heal from it. So once I started to, you know, reveal it more on social media, I started to post videos of no makeup on my YouTube channel. I just realized no one cares. Like, literally, no one cares. As long as you know who you are in Christ, as long as you know what, who, what God thinks of you, as long, as long as you know that your fiance still loves you, that your family still loves you, that's all that matters. But the most important thing is who, what God thinks of you. And that is all that matters on this earth. It doesn't matter what people want to say about, you know, your body shape or the way your hair is, where your skin color is, where your, you know, your acne is. It does not matter. As long as you get your approval from God, that is all you need. Amen. Incredible. That's brilliant advice there. And I think it's so right what Ricardo was saying about 
letting out your insecurities because it's actually the devil that wants you to hold it in because when you hold it in, you have to struggle with it yourself and you have to deal with it on your own. But the moment you speak it out, the moment you let it out and actually give it to God, I think there's a verse that yeah. says, cast your burdens onto him for he cares for you. Cast your anxieties <laughs> onto him because he wants to take that weight off you and he wants to help you through it. And maybe that's also going to someone you trust. Maybe it's someone at church or a family member or a friend and just saying, look, I'm struggling with this insecurity or I'm, I'm struggling with this addiction or this worry, whatever it is. And just break that chain of it being in bondage to you and, and it controlling you and you start to control it. So I think that's that's really good advice there. And, and I think even on a practical level with the acne thing, the more makeup you put on it, actually the worse the acne is probably exactly. going to get. So it's really yeah. good to just let your body be refreshed and, and, and be breathe. how, exactly, let it breathe and, and be how God created it to, to be. And I think it's, 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 you don't really realize it that people don't care in your head you build it up don't you i i'm guilty of it i worry what if this what if that what if they think this what if they think that and then most of the time they don't even think that anyway so you spend all that time worrying for nothing sorry is that again nothing that sometimes we worry so much about what people are going to think about us but they're actually too worried about themselves they're probably worrying about themselves or what people could think about me so they're too, they're too worried about themselves to be even thinking of to be thinking about you so exactly yeah very good point very good point well there is a scripture that i also saw on on your website that's really influenced you in your life and that is romans 5 3 to 5 i'm going to read it um it says we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance mm. develops strength of character and character strengthens our confidence of hope of salvation and this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Amen. So in what ways has this scripture influenced you in your life? Mm. Oh, in so many ways. Even going back to my parents' divorce, going back to the breakups, I've just seen that through that suffering produced so much character in me, so much strength in me. Because now that when I go through, you know, um, tests and trials, I know that if God got me through that storm, he's going to get me through this storm as well. So it's just such an encouraging verse. Like when you, whenever you go through any type of tests and trials and storms, you can just always hold on to that verse and know that this suffering is actually producing character in me. It's actually producing strength in me. And one thing I always tell myself is whatever you're going through, it's not there to break you, it's there to build you. So when you start to change your perspective and mindset on your trials, instead of, you know, being dreading, you know, storms, instead of dreading them, because one thing I used to do is I used to dread, um, because after all the trauma I'd been through, I was so scared of being hurt again. I was so scared of facing, you know, heartbreaking. I was, I was terrified of it. But now, not that I'm saying bring it on, because, you know, we all want to have a peaceful life. But I'm, I've, I've just got this mindset now, but whatever does come my way, I know that I'm strong enough to endure it because I was because I got through that, I produced that strength to be able to endure the next one that does come in my, in my life. So it's just such an encouraging verse. Definitely. And I think looking back is quite important. I think in our lives, we do go through trials, we do go through challenges, we do go through tribulations, and it's really tough at the time. But when you, mm. like after it's happened, and when you look back, you actually see God's hand in that and how he was helping you through that. And something that my friend said to me recently, actually, is like, when we pray for something, God doesn't necessarily always just bring it to you on a plate. He brings you the opportunities to build that up. So say like, if you're praying for boldness or for confidence, he won't just give you that boldness, he'll give you opportunities yeah to be bold he might nudge you to go and pray for a homeless person or go do something outside your comfort zone and when you do them things when you're obedient and and you go through them opportunities that's what builds your strength that's what builds your character and that's why we need to endure them tough times and listen to god in them tough times because mm -hmm. that will actually build us like you said so that's really encouraging mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that so you've used your trials to build a ministry called get a uh, girl get up tell us about that yeah. and how it was born I did, yeah. So I got to, you know, just rock bottom. After everything I'd been through, I just hit rock bottom. And I was really depressed. I was in a really, really just bad place. I didn't want to get up anymore. I didn't want to eat anymore. I was just in a really just tough time. Um, but it was through that tough time that Girl Girl was birthed. Because I sat there one day and I thought, I thought to myself, I know that I'm not the only woman going through this right now. I know that I'm not the only one that, that's struggling to get out of bed, that's struggling to go to the gym, that's struggling to get go to work, just face the day. I, I just knew that I wasn't the only one. So I told myself, if I can get back up through God, I know that I'm going to be able to help other women get back up as well. So that's exactly where Girl Get Up came along. 
Um, so now I have this full time ministry where I help. I can I help to counsel women. I help to uplift them through my YouTube videos, through my social media accounts, through my Instagram. I post, you know, encouraging posts that just make you feel uplifted, that, that encourage you, that motivate you, that make you want to get out of bed in the morning and see the hope in your dark times, that make you see the purpose in your suffering. And that's the whole purpose of Girl Get Up, to help you get back up from your storms, from, from your, you know, traumas, from your breakups, from your heartbreak. That's the whole purpose behind it. Amazing. And I think that's so important to have positive, influential posts on social media because, like I mentioned earlier, we're so addicted to just scrolling. And especially if we are feeling down, if we are struggling with depression or whatever it is, and if we're just scrolling and we see one of your posts that's really there, mm -hmm. it might make us stop and think, hang on, we, we can be positive and it's really good that yeah. you're able to uplift people. And you have a guide there that we can see on screen of actually practical ways to get up. So right. what's involved in the guide? Yeah, so I wrote Go Get Up last year. I actually wrote it in less than three months. God was like, you need to write this book because it's going to help many girls to get back up. So I was just obedient. I just, I went crazy. I just wrote, I spent three months nonstop just writing this book. And it's basically got seven steps to help you overcome and evolve. This book is basically my whole life been seven steps on how to get back up so I've just basically summed up all my experiences all things that God has taught me over the years and I've made it into seven um, seven steps to help you overcome your trials and overcome change your mindsets change your perspective on life and I actually have a chapter in there called um, comparison is a thief of joy and that actually talks a lot about social media and how it affects affects us and it actually makes us compare each other all the time and it never leads us anywhere good it doesn't lead to a good place and it actually just takes away from us so I lo I'd love to read a bit of it now actually yeah. um it's actually chapter number um six so it says comparison sees with joy let me ask you something if you were alone on this earth would you still be chasing the things that you're chasing after would you still be seeking for approval would you still feel insecure or inadequate most of us would answer no because we'd have no one to impress so here's my next question who are you doing it for in all areas of our lives, we are always chasing after people's approval. Do we have more followers than her? Is my house bigger than hers? Um, every day we are, we are constantly seeking praise from others. But God tells that that isn't the way to live. Um, in Galatians 1.10 it actually says, for, for I am now seeking the approval of man or of God. I'm, am I trying to please man? If I was still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So you may feel behind watching others get married, move out, have kids, you know, seeing everyone's highlight on Instagram. Um, but I want, I want to let you know right now that God has a unique plan for your life. In um, 1 Corinthians 2, it actually says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Even though God has those amazing plans for you, if you're too busy glancing left to right, you know, comparing yourself on social media, oh, but she's got a nicer house than me, you know, she's got a bigger butt than me, like, we compare ourselves in crazy ways on social media. Um, if you're too busy glancing from left to right, you're going to miss the blessing, you're going to miss what God has in store for you. Um, so nothing, ever com uh, nothing good ever comes out of comparison. It produces jealousy, pride, envy, and that the Bible actually says, for wherever there is jealousy and self ambition, there you'll find um, disorder and evil of every kind. That's how bad comparison is. Um, comparison is a vicious cycle of us comparing ourselves to others and others comparing themselves to us. This leads us chasing after more, wanting more, accumulating more, which is which in the end is just worthless. Everything is temporary and everything we ever need is found in God. So the secret to overcoming comparison is gratitude. And that's we're gonna that's what is in the next chapter. So the next chapter is actually attitude of gratitude, which helps you overcome, you know, that mindset of comparison. It's really, really good. So the whole the whole ebook, the whole um Girl Get Up guide is just really encouraging. If you want to change your mindset, change your perspective on life, you know, overcome that comparison, overcome fear of failure, fear of the future, any fears that you have, overcome, you know, past traumas. It's just in a really encouraging book to help you change and overcome and evolve. Amazing. You can definitely tell that was Holy Spirit written because that is so true. Everything you said, it's really inspiring. And just to remind our viewers, how can they get hold of that? You say it's an ebook. How can they get hold of it? Yeah, they can actually go to my website on girlgetupministries.co.uk. There'll be a link right there. It's on the first page. You'll find it right there. And just click buy now and it'll add it straight to your cart. As soon as you buy it, you get an email with all the download links and you get it straight away. 
Amazing. And when you're talking about comparison there, it just makes me think of a race. If you're in your own lane, you need to focus of you being in your own lane and you need to focus on the finish line and run towards it. Because the moment you start looking left or right to the people next to you, that's when distractions happen. That's when you might not realise and trip over your feet. And then that's when you fall down because you're too busy looking at the people either side of you. So if you want to get to your destination or get to the finish line, then you need to focus mm -hmm. on that and look at that. And I think you mentioned yeah. it earlier, having your identity in Christ is such a strong way of being able to do that because it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. You know that God's given you that path or that gift and that's direction and that's the direction you go in. So if someone's watching yeah. today and they go, what is identity in Christ? What does that mean and how do you find it? What, how would you explain that to someone and how can they find mm -hmm. their identity in Christ? That's really good. I feel like the first thing is to be rooted in the word of God because nowadays, and especially in this time that we're living in right now, there are so many voices. There are mm. so many, you know, standards of uh, beauty standards. There are so many, even social media screaming that you need lip fillers, you need to change your body, you need to get implants. All these different, all these different voices that are just influencing us to the wrong, you know, the wrong directions. When you when you root yourself in the Word of God, He tells you what you should be seeking after. He tells you what you what you should be, you know, living by. So once you get rooted in that word, even that verse I read earlier, which is in Psalms 139, keep declaring that over yourself. When you when you start to believe um, that the way God creates you to be, is literally in His image, we're created in His image. There are no God makes no mistakes. So once you start affirming that over yourself, it will change your perspective. So definitely get rooted in the Word of God because that will be able to silence all the voices around you. I think that's one of my biggest biggest. But that's what's helped me so much to silence the voice, the voices on social media and be able to just listen to what God, what God says about me. Incredible. And I, I also want to encourage people. I use the, the idea of replacing negative thoughts with, the, with positive one so if you're thinking something negative about yourself or someone has said something about yourself or these doubts or these lies from the devils are coming to your head go to the word like Gabriella said and find the truth that you are unconditionally loved that God died or Jesus died on the cross to save you you are forgiven you don't need to live yeah. in the shame or guilt anymore so whenever these these thoughts come and speak them out loud as well because sometimes we can get overwhelmed with our thoughts and it becomes a loop and all we do is think 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 but the moment you speak it kind of breaks that loop and then you're speaking yeah. truth into your life and truth into the situation so yeah. I want to encourage you to do that and Gabriella what practical ways on social media can we help people do this if we're Christians ourselves and we might be inspired mm -hmm. by the fact that you are posting these uplifting encouraging posts as individual mm -hmm. Christians what can we do on our social media for the people that are following us or our friends on Facebook yeah that's really good so I'd actually love to read a bible verse Romans 12 2 don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So to basically add on to that verse, we have to become the change that we want to see in this world. In the, you know, in the social media, in the time right now where, you know, there are so many negative voices, there are so many different influences. We are called to be the light of the world, which is actually found in Matthew, I believe. So I'm going to get up now. Matthew 5 14 which is we are called to be a light of the world so if we can you we can be a light on social media how like we can change social media because if, if just one person can post that encouraging post I can post that picture that doesn't conform to the patterns of the world because like I said before I used to post a lot of pictures full filled of makeup but now I'm posting pictures with no makeup it's making girls think oh maybe I don't need to wear makeup to become beautiful on social media to get those likes on social media it's just changing it's just not conforming to the patterns of this world and being different stand out by being different stand out by being modest stand out by you know encouraging others by motivating others and just like that you're going to be a light in such a dark place of social media definitely and the bible tells us don't it doesn't it to be the light and the salt of the the earth and that means like jesus is the light of the world and he reflects goodness into the world and as christians as disciples and followers of christ that we are called to also do that is take the light that jesus has shined in our life and shine it into the life of those who are, are suffering in darkness as well so that's really encouraging and you're amazing at the fact that you have these scriptures to hand and you know how to apply these into your life how much bible study or, or reading of the bible do you do is it on a daily basis or is it something you've ever struggled with and how have you overcome that? Mm -hmm. So one thing I really struggle with is laziness and procrastination, especially when it came to the word of God. And I feel like one thing that devil tries to do, he tries to steal your time. There's actually a Bible verse, which is in John 10, 10, which is about the enemy coming to steal, kill and destroy. And one thing that me and my fiance always say is that um, the devil, um, he comes to steal your time, 
kill your vision and destroy your faith. Those are his three tactics. That's how we apply that verse into our lives. So one thing the devil always tries to do, he tries to steal my time, my time with God, that, you know, that intimate time in his presence, reading my word. He tries to steal that by, you know, getting me to go on social media because I used to be so addicted to social media where I would spend hours and hours scrolling and scrolling when I could be scrolling through the living scroll, which is the Bible. Um, so that's something that I definitely used to struggle with a lot. And I feel like that's something that we all struggle with because there's so many distractions nowadays. You know, we could, instead of being sat at home, reading the Bible, we could be out there with friends. We could be, you know, chilling with other people. We could be on social media, so many different distractions. But um, one thing that helped me to, one actually one person that inspired me to get deep into my was actually my fiance. If you ever meet my fiance, he can literally recite the whole Bible back to front. He just knows the verses like from the top of the top of his head. It was just amazing. And he actually really inspired me to get deep into my word. So just watching him every single day, he doesn't go on his phone first thing in the morning. He just sits there in his room reading the word. Wow. And that really inspired me. So I started to get into that routine as well. So every morning before I even touch my phone, I go straight to the word of God. Because you need to start your day right. You need to start your day with Jesus um just have that routine of making time for god if you've got time in the morning because you've got kids you've got work early in your lunch break go sit in the cafe and read that bible or you know at night time before you go to sleep, just make make some time make room for god he's waiting for you he's waiting to speak to you he's waiting to reveal things to you so just make that time for god and once i've once i've started to do that I will, the Bible, like when you read the Bible, it reads you. So I start to learn so much about myself the more I read the Bible. The more I really read the Bible, the more it, it sticks into your mind. So when you're talking to people, when you're sharing things, you'll remember, oh, that's that verse. That, that verse reminds you of what I'm talking about right now. So you're able to, to you know, share more of the gospel because the more you read the Bible as well. So, Definitely. yeah. That reminds me of something my dad used to say to me. He said, when you read the Bible, you might not remember it there and then, but it kind of like goes on the CD of your mind and then yeah. it's in there. And then when you need to, when God needs you to speak it to someone, maybe in a situation, it will bring it back to your mind. But the fact, if you haven't read it, it's not in your mind then for God to be able to bring it out. So yeah. I think a lot of people pressure themselves thinking, well, I'm not a very good reader. I read the Bible. I don't remember it. And people try to cram and memorize. But I think if we just relax in the presence of God and we just read it and we ask the Holy spirit to reveal to us in that moment of time what he wants us to know then he will and I just want to encourage others that don't be so forceful with it like I think we do need to pray for motivation because I think like you say there is so many distractions in the world there's other things we'd rather do and if that's something you're struggling with then accountability is accountability is a great idea like the fact that you were inspired by Ricardo was doing it so you started doing yeah. it and if there's someone you can read the Bible with or even if you mm -hmm. do need your own time with God just have someone that, that's kind of responsible to keep you accountable just on a daily that's basis good. maybe share a scripture with them to say oh what was it that you learned today or on a weekly basis or monthly basis just encourage each other because then you can kind of be like prayer partners and Bible partners in that that's and I think good. when you are feeling lazy or, or demotivated you'll have that person to help pick you up and guide you into reading yeah. the Bible and you can be there for when they're struggling as well so it's just a practical yeah. piece of device that uh, I think would be really good good for our viewers yeah. so Gabriella if there's someone watching today and they don't have that relationship with Jesus they they don't really know who God is what encouragement mm. or advice can you give them why should they seek a relationship with Jesus mm. well how so you guys have heard my story my testimony a bit of what I went through with the divorces with the breakups the heartbreak and I'm telling you right now, I will not be here today if it was not for God. If it wasn't for God's grace, if it wasn't for his, you know, helping hand, if it wasn't for his love. Because I had to go through, I had to do go for a lot of healing. And if it wasn't for God's, you know, love to comfort me in those dark times, I just wouldn't be here today. So I know that by, by accepting Jesus into your life, it is the best decision you'll ever make. You will never regret that decision of accepting Jesus into your life. Because the love that he gives you, the comfort that he gives you, the freedom that he gives you, you can't even explain it. So if you if you don't know Christ today, if you don't know God, I promise you just take that bold step and say yes to God and it will be the best decision you ever make. Definitely. And it's, it's in a way just as easy as that, isn't it? It's just inviting God to come into your life yeah. and just to reveal. And it's we, like I said earlier, it's called a journey because it doesn't all happen at once. You don't go to sleep yeah. and overnight everything is perfect. But God wants to to work in you and to prepare you like the scripture in Romans said to to build your character. And it's our part as well. We have to be proactive in that and we have to ask God to reveal things to us and us be willing yeah. to work. I think the Bible talks about we're co-workers with Christ because that means it's yeah. our part to be open and to be willing and 
learned to be obedient. And then that's mm. when it means that Christ can work in our life. Because if we're cold hearted, if we're hard hearted and we don't want to know, then Jesus will leave us alone. He's a gentleman. He's knocking at yeah. the door of you today. And if you open it, he will then come in and work into your life. So Gabriella, maybe could you just pray for our viewers, whoever's watching today, whatever situation they're in, whether they're a Christian or not, whether they're facing trials, anxiety, worry, stress. Can you just pray yeah. for them today? Of course, yeah, let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time together. I want to thank you for every single person watching this right now. I want to pray for every single person who is struggling this moment in time right now, Lord God, who are going through a heartbreak, who are going through a divorce, who are going through family issues, Lord God, or even, even financial stress, Lord God. I pray for every single person who is just under attack right now. I want, yeah, I want you to remind them right now that it's through this storm. This storm that they're going through is actually an invitation to go deeper with you, Lord. And I pray that it's through the storm that they're going to seek you more, Lord God, because you are to seek and you shall find. So as they seek you in this dark time, Lord God, I pray that they will find you, Lord God. And when they do find you, may you provide them with peace and comfort that they're looking for, Lord God. I pray for all the women, all the men that go into social media for validation, Lord God, that are comparing themselves daily. Remind them right now, Lord God, that they do not need to do that. That is just a waste of time because the minute they go to the word of God and they remind themselves of who they are in Christ, that's when they're going to feel they're going to um, receive full satisfaction, Lord God, and they're going to receive real comfort, Lord God, and the validation that their souls need, Lord God. So just remind them right now that you are there waiting for them with arms wide open, ready to give them the exact love that they need, the exact comfort that they need, the exact, you know, um, um, validation that they need right now. So I just want to pray that for your comfort to come upon every single person watching this video right now. May you comfort them, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name pray. Amen. Amen. And Lord, I just want to pray for each individual person watching today that we want to thank Gabriella for sharing her testimony today, for being open and being honest. And Lord, if there's any people watching that have felt convicted by the testimony today or relating to some of the things that Gabriella spoke about, Lord, I really pray that you just fill them with your peace. You fill them with your presence. You fill them with your wisdom and godly discernment to know what to do in the situations that they're fighting against, Lord. And I just pray for anyone who's feeling lonely that the Bible tells us you never leave nor forsake us. So Lord, I just pray that you remind them that you are with them through every battle they face, mm -hmm. every step they take, you have their hand and you are guiding them. And Lord, I just um, want to bless Gabriella for, for the story that she's told us today and for the wisdom and encouragement she has given us, Lord. And I pray that you continue to strengthen her in her ministry and in the work that she's doing and you continue to provide her with the heart and the love that she needs to reach out to people in the way that she's doing and guide her to know what kind of social media um, post to put online to really encourage and bless others. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Amazing. Well, we are coming towards the end of the program, but I did notice on your Instagram page, there was a post that was why becoming a Christian was the best decision I ever made. So I think it'd be really helpful for us to just go through some of the points that were on uh, the Instagram post. Um, so the first one is that I get to feel loved by the creator of the universe. Yeah, so it speaks for itself. I get to feel loved by the creator of the universe. For example, when you, you've, got an, you, if you've got your phone right now, I've got an Apple iPhone, right? If there's a problem with the phone, in order to fix it, I go to the Apple store to be able to fix it because they're the creator of Apple. So they know all the intricate details of what needs to be fixed in that phone. So God is literally our creator. So he knows us. He knows every single detail about us. Whenever there's an issue with us, he knows exactly what, what we need in order to fix that issue because he is our creator. And, you know, when I look at the skies, when I look at nature, when I look at the sunsets, he created all of that. And I get to be loved by the same person that created the, all those marvelous things. So it's just a beautiful feeling of being loved by the creator. Incredible, incredible. The next point is that God helps me to see purpose in my pain and he always turns it out for my good. And I think your testimony today has just been a brilliant example of that, how he turned your pain into purpose, into what you're doing now. The one after that says, I get to spend eternity in heaven. Why is that exciting for you, Gabriella? <laughs> wow, it, it really is exciting because... The, the thought of hell, that is really scary to me. But I know that the minute you accept the minute you accept Jesus into your life, that is your salvation guaranteed. That is literally where you're heading straight out to. When you die, that's what, that's literally your home. This this is our temporary home. Earth is, isn't where, you know, this is not this is just a temporary home. But to know that we're going to spend eternity in heaven where there is no more tears, there is no more pain, there's no more heartbreak. It's just constant joy, constant love, constant peace. What an exciting place, you know, to be. So... 
Amazing. Thank you so much, Gabriella, for sharing those. Unfortunately, we have come towards the end of the programme, so we don't have time to go through all the points. But I do want to encourage you to check out Gabriella on social media, on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and her website there, Girl Get Up Ministries, for much more inspirational and encouraging posts. Gabriella, thank you so much for being with us today on Impact. God bless you for watching. I hope you've been encouraged, and we'll see you next time. Next time.